My name is René Stranzenbach. I'm a specialist in dermatology at the University Hospital Johannes Wessling in Minden. As we gained experience with brentuximab vedutin in our department, we performed the literature review discussing which role has brentuximab vedutin in CD30-positive cutaneous lymphoma. Why did you do this study? We did this literature review to get an overview of the currently used therapeutic protocols of brentuximab vedutin and to identify any different regimens published previously. Following this, we analyzed our results with the help of the literature that is dedicated to considering an alternative therapy and the tumor entity respecting regimen. Another aim of the study was to check whether dose reduction or modified time intervals could benefit in a similar activity with less toxicity. How did you do it? We conducted a systemic review of the literature indexed in PubMed and Cochrane Central Register of Control Trials Central. The procedure was based on the PRISMA criteria. What were your main findings? The review showed that the currently used therapeutic regimen is 1.8 mg per kilogram every three weeks. No publications of dose finding studies in CD30 positive cutaneous T cell lymphoma were found. Two cases of patients treated with a dosage lower than 1.8 mg per kilogram have been published. Brentux mavidutin has been shown to be a powerful treatment option in refractory CD30 positive cutaneous T cell lymphoma in a recently published phase 3 study. And combining this with our own observation, we noticed a trend that both dose reductions and prolonged treatment intervals are effective without any loss in the quality of the treatment but with fewer side effects. Why is this study relevant to dermatologists and patients with CD30 positive lymphoma of the skin? Brentuximab is a promising treatment option against CD30 positive cutaneous T cell lymphoma. Compared to the currently used scheme, the lower dosage and prolonged intervals in this alternative option could result in less severe side effects like drug-induced neurotoxicity without any loss of efficacy. The possible protocols are presented in this thesis. However, prospective studies should be carried out to obtain more information about the optimal treatment regimen.